An interesting development of Philip's life is there are some changes that we want to witness. Because the Barbados team has been selected mm -hmm. and will be traveling to Trinidad, I believe, sometime over the weekend, the coming weekend, uh, to take part in the regional, the, the second half of the regional four day competition. Uh -huh. And that is going to uh, affect a, a few teams as far as the, the, the strength of some of these teams are concerned. And it will be very interesting to see. Uh, what these um, withdrawals, if you can use that word, uh, uh, from some of the teams will throw up when, when the competition resumes. I think the Empire, as far as numbers are concerned, uh, will be the hardest hit. Of course, we know that there are players who are more crucial, uh, individual players who are more crucial to, to their teams than, 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 than others. And, and, and we take a look at a team like Pickwick, for instance. I mean, Pickwick without Shea Hope is a completely different Pickwick. You know, it's a, it, it is a definitely weakened side. Like, likewise, a Spartan without Shamar Brooks. You know, so uh, on the other hand, a team like Carlton, I've been noticing, um, they, well, they have already lost a, a couple, but uh, I don't think they will be as hard hit uh, as some of these other teams. They can think of uh, Keon Harding uh, leaving, uh, missing for Carlton, for instance. Well, I can but, tell you something. Keon Harding um, in the game against Foundation last weekend didn't even have the ball. Well, okay, that's what I'm saying. So they, they, they might not be as hard hit. And they, they have a, a complement of experienced players outside of those uh, th those national representatives. And um, even in the case of the captain, Kyle Mears, who is now well in India at the moment and will be heading off with the West Indies team quite shortly also. So that is going to be a, an interesting um, factor uh, come this weekend and, and next weekend too. You know, as the, the the preliminary rounds come to a conclusion. Okay, so um, what uh, piques your interest uh, this weekend? Both zones are beginning to see the separation uh, of the the top teams vying for those four quarterfinal places, and those who may very well not factor uh, come towards uh, when it comes to determining the player the the teams going through to the playoffs. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at a uh, zone A, for instance, and you see that Common Mary is on no points. The Barbados Youth A on four. Um, isolation Cavaliers just with the one win. Defending champions Gladiola uh, very much uh, in the doldrums, in, in the cellar, uh, also on four points. So you're already beginning to see that Empire, for instance, and UWIA, the unbeaten teams uh, in this team, in this zone, along with Wildy. You know, they, they have already separated themselves. And uh, when I look at some of the remaining fixtures, it, it, it appears fairly straightforward. Who will qualify and who won't? If everything goes to form, of course. There's some teams that maybe um, have been, one may want to say, surprisingly competitive this season. Um, any that uh, impress you, you know, unexpectedly, if you will? So we've seen a first division club like Yorkshire uh, factoring in to the competition in zone B. But we, before we go any further with the Yorkshire though, um, and this may be a good time to share our little chat with the Yorkshire player coach, uh, Jamal Smith. Let's share that chat with our viewers. So time to talk T20 with Jamal Smith. Welcome, Jamal. Hi, hi. How are you doing, Philip and Wayne? Hi, good well, I'm doing fine, and Wayne is, is always good. Wayne is always good. Always on defense, but I, it's a little secret that um, he will learn. Uh, in the not too distant future about that fence. But uh, yeah. that's a, a story for another time. Yeah, so we're both doing fine. And I don't need to ask how you're doing because if I was coaching a team that has looked as good as your side this season, I would be cock a hoop. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Uh, good point. Uh, you're actually doing reasonably well. I still we're being competitive uh, at the moment, Philip. Competitive. Well, you've got 12 points, if my calculations are correct, and you sit behind Carlton on 20, UWAB on 16, and you're alongside Wonders and Spartan, all three of you on 12. And then behind you, you've got Lords on 8, YMPC 8, Foundation 4, Maple 4, and Barbados Youth B yet to score. So you are in the top five, and of course, we know four will qualify. You must be fairly comfortable, not comfortable, I should say confident, that you stand a good chance of going forward. Yeah, most um, most definitely, we have both school teams this weekend, uh, Foundation first on Saturday and the school will be on Sunday, obviously hoping uh, to collect those eight points there and then look towards uh, the final round against Spartan 
and YMPC. So certainly we're looking to at least win three out of four of those games. If we can win all four, we, we love that. But this weekend is a big weekend. Uh, two teams that have not been doing that well. And, and I'm hoping that we've not just found our straight. So we're looking uh, to put them to bed. Well, I haven't seen uh, Barbados you be myself, but the fact that they haven't uh, scored any points would support what you're saying. I've seen Foundation and I've followed closely a couple of their games. Don't take them lightly. Yeah, Foundation a bit tricky, uh, Davis in particular. Um, I have some plans for him already, Philip, to be very honest with you. Um, I know they've they had a decent account with themselves, but as I said, you know, I believe in that Yorkshire are, is hitting their stride, particularly. Our uh, bowling department looks really, really good. Never mind uh, that Wanderers got away to 200 runs um, in the last game. But uh, all in all, boys are doing pretty well. Our batting is now taking shape, I would say. So I'm pretty confident that once we play our best cricket, or we should still want to play a good cricket, we should still come out victorious. You said the batting is, is finding its way. Um, is it fair to say led by Juan Jamal Smith? Well, Revenge of Assad stole the show. Um, on the weekend, obviously, that fantastic 143 balls. I'll tell you something, Philip. I've watched a lot of local cricket. I've seen a lot of local cricket. I even saw Primus in the first innings against us. And that was something special. That was something special to watch. And, you know, I was always excited uh, that Ravi Prasad was joining us, you know, with his bowling, his batting ability, and his own cricket knowledge. And his catching as well. He's caught really well this season. But seeing that innings, you know, I don't know if I see something like that again on the local scene uh, from ball one. He was, he was on the money. But, you know, myself, I didn't plan to play this year at all. Um, we were looking good in terms of new recruits. We got five guys, but unfortunately, they've gone over to England. Um, Grove Nerve, Daryl Boyce, Vitaly Wilkinson, Talbert Bradford is over there as well, and uh, Shaquem. But so what's happened with us is that our batting looked a little frail, and they decided, you know, to dust off, literally dust off my gear bike. And so far, it's been going well for me. And just, you know, sticking to the basics, trying to assess the situation and give the impetus where needed. So, you know, I'm happy with the overall performance of the arts. As I said, the batting now seems to be taking shape. Still need a little more from Lane, need a little more from Nero and um, Lamar as well. You know, I believe Lamar has a lot of ability at the top. He's Lamar Worrell. He hasn't had any major scores yet, but I think he's still a fellow to look out for. So overall, satisfied. You said Dario Boyce. That was the name I heard. Yes, uh, Dario Boyce. He's put a place on practice games for us. Obviously, you no, know, he would have been with Spartan. I think. Well, the BDF. Uh, he mm-hmm. does practice games with us, and he extended his interest, and I'm expecting him to come back home and represent us as well. You mean recruited from from um, from Grammy Adams, <laughs> with Tony um, Wilkinson, and Dario Boyce, uh, uh, Rovner. You don't yeah. have to answer that. You, you don't have to confess yeah. to that. I, I mean the BDF as well. And as you know, for the guys move in pairs, sometimes they move in, in triples or even fours and, you know, they're comfortable in the environment. They live close by as well, so, yes, you know, it all works for me. It all works for Yorkshire. Mm-hmm. Ben? Yes, Jamal, um, on a national level, though, this competition, um, all well and good, but um, where would you like to see T20 cricket go? Do, 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 um, do you see this as the ultimate in T20 domestically, or, or, or do, would you like to see uh, even uh, another tier, a higher level of T20 on, on the island? We yeah, that's a lovely question. I remember trying to answer this question when I actually interviewed for the BCA cricket operations job, which I uh, unfortunately didn't get. <laughs> but, uh, well, you should, you that... probably should have done this show first. Yes, probably, probably. <laughs> but uh, seriously speaking, I personally believe that Barbados in general has not treated the T20 well, has not played it particularly well, in my opinion. Um, I always like to say, that the only major, major start of this, we have Kurt Mears and Jason Holder we, we had, but from back then, just possibly to Smith, we had that whole era with Larry Bob and Carlo Marsh and those guys, I'm sure you remember uh, that tournament on the sticky we hit, et cetera. But mm-hmm. in general, I don't think we have treated to T20 cricket in the way we play or the way we've organized it. I think we've just been missing the trick. I would have had the opportunity to play in Trinidad. Uh, back in 2018, I think it was, I saw how their T20 was structured and how they go about the business playing T20s during the week under the light. So it's almost like, you know, it's a, a bit of a head start. I do believe, man, that there could be another tier. You know, it could be a, a, a serious national competition, probably like six of the best teams, franchise, probably a bit corporate, Barbados, et cetera. But, you know, I'll try to be, I don't want to cancel pioneers at this moment, but, you know, I'll try to get out, um, get ahead of the competition in the Caribbean, both in terms of, uh, good Barbados T20 players and a good Barbados T20 product. 
you know, if you notice, you see uh, the Vinci is doing a little thing with the T10. I remember there was some competition being played in Antigua. Uh, just now, I'm sitting behind my screen, be, sitting behind my computer screen, wondering what's happening in Barbados, to, to be quite frank. And, you know, I honestly believe the BCA has lost a, lost a bit of touch on the policy of the community cricket in particular. I'll take you back to when the Oi Buffett tournament was playing, for example. You would know um, the, I was a fanfare, but you would know the following that that, that tournament has gotten and the type of players that represent that tournament. I tell you what, man, that's the hardest T20 cricket I've ever played in this country. Uh, obviously, because of the ground and the atmosphere, but obviously, quality of the players as well. And it was set up in a franchise model, yes. Uh, the big money wasn't there, but once you get in top four, money was available. They have owners of the team. I remember my team that I captain would have been owned by the Braffits, um, the Ox and them, Ox and uh, them. boat crew. And I feel like I know supporters. I would have worn my Ox and them shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> those guys support us tremendously. The atmosphere itself and the way how the cricket was played. I need mean, some bold, robust cricket. I and mean, you would know you've taken in a lot of uh, so that cricket. Good crowd, good energy, you know. And, and I always say this to the people at BCA if they would like to listen that the pulse of the community T20 cricket is where you need to situate your franchise. Uh, so, for instance, I would have played some BCL T20, I think, back in 2019, just before the COVID. Belfield actually went to the final. Mm-hmm. I remember we, I played against the team from Cyan Hill. I can't remember the name right now. Carlo and, and, and those guys. Uh-huh. And the atmosphere... Newberry, and the I think it's called. It's Newberry. Newberry, correct. And the atmosphere mm-hmm. throughout that entire tournament, again, was very, very good. And you had a very, very good crowd at the finals. And you know there was a buzz about the T20 cricket. I think our local T20 cricket it serves a purpose, obviously, and you know, especially in terms of starting back cricket, it is it is lovely to see. But you're missing, you know, you're missing the pulse of the people. You're missing the pulse. It's spread very far away. Remember, there was a model they had tried when they were playing uh, basically two games at one ground. Yeah, I thought that it. was a decent enough experiment you were getting in the crowd, especially obviously for the afternoon game at Seth, where they went away from that. So what I've noticed, for instance, playing for Yorkshire, I, I can't count 15 spectators if I be honest. At any of the cricket games, and, and you know that's a cause for concern. Because that was one of my uh, observations. You know, I, I I watched the game, and I would say the game I watched. I watched the game between Maple and Foundation, and uh, the, the the atmosphere was so dull, you know, so 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 dim, that I told myself. But then T Twenty cricket is supposed to be this attraction. T Twenty cricket is, is is supposed to bring people to cricket. No, in this in, in this modern time where people don't have uh, time, people are looking for, for to, to spend their time in a very worthwhile manner, and it was like it was like almost a, a dead doom situation. I, I really cannot understand why are we playing this. But but when the BCA plan um, a, a special type of T Twenty event that was put on hold because of COVID, uh, wouldn't that be would be something that was going in that direction? I, I don't remember. That was the, supposed to be K- Kaduma Cup, I think it was. I think it was supposed to be the name, or that was... Yeah, I, I don't remember was the name, but the name. Um, neither do I remember exactly what, what separated it from other T20 tournaments, except that it would have involved uh, playing some matches at night. That day and night model, especially if you're going to do double headers, it worked very, very well. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm borrowing from City Oi Braffitt tournament and you know, I've beseeched some people at the BCA who are in higher positions to see how these community tournaments are being organized and figure out what is missing. I remember Brian Corbin and those guys did a tournament down St. Lucie at, yes, at yes. Um, North Stars. That was a mm-hmm. success as well. People came out watching mm-hmm. cricket. It was yes, exciting. They, that that, that double Boys tournament. tournament. Yeah. So, you Keith know, I, I said the BD Keith Boys, the BCA really needs to put the finger on my my, my, my club. It switched. We had a, we, we, we yep. introduced T10 cricket. You, oh, yeah. Um, uh, we, you, yes, I don't remember you that. Are, myself, you at Belfield. Uh, you and your group at Belfield. That's, that's a rollicking tournament. That was a brilliant tournament as well. You, so, you know. No, I'm man, talking about you and your guys at Belfield. Yes, no, it was I, just, I actually remember. <laughs> COVID stopped us at the semi-final Stop stage, it. but that was a brilliant tournament and mm-hmm. a good crowd and everything. So I'm saying to you, the BCA has the data there. They have the information there. It's just for somebody to and use they, it. And they have the personnel they done. can tap into with this. Oh, they certainly, they, they certainly <laughs> do have the personnel. They certainly well, do. I'll tell you what. Um, we're going to look to continue this weekend. Who is hoping that... Um, I, I heard that there are some... There being one or two COVID um, issues already uh, in some of the games. I, I don't know the details. Of, you know, as usual, these things are usually kept very quiet. So here's hoping that um, we can move beyond that and the problem, you know, doesn't get the better of us and that we can continue the tournament this weekend and, and see it through the completion. So um, Jamal, thanks very much for joining us. 
Um, we can talk with you all night, but uh, <laughs> very short, very short program just uh, previewing the events of the weekend. So all the best to you and to Yorkshire and uh, uh, to the BCA as they try to, you know, make sure that this tournament and the tournaments to follow uh, get things right back on track. Yeah, most certainly. And, you know, I still have to give credit where it's due to the BCA, obviously, um, who was in the tournament looking to have a full season. So as you already said, Philip, let's hope that these couple of issues and they will pop up during the season. There will be some COVID cases, et cetera. But let's just hope that it does not derail the entire process because, you know, it would have been a mammoth effort to get the cricket uh, going again. And we'll see where we're at probably in another couple of weeks. And hopefully we will get through the coming months and, and we'll have a successful 2022 season. Well said, Jamal. Mm -hmm. We'll talk some more. Thank later. you, Jamal. No problem, guys. Okay, so thanks to Jamal Smith, very confident youngster, uh, multi talented, I like to say, uh, very good on the field, off the field as a coach. And of course, we all know his skills uh, with the microphone. Well, yes, a uh, very good uh, analyst of the game, and one, one who has a very, very good understanding of cricket from a number of different angles, also, you know. But what I can tell you for this upcoming weekend, there are two crucial games in the play competition uh, I, that I have noticed where unbeaten teams come up against one another. On Saturday, you have in zone B, um, Melbourne, Benson, Minimar, Melbourne will be hosting the police team at Oxnard. Uh, and, and both of these teams have so far gone unbeaten. And then on Sunday, one one game that has been pushed back to Sunday in Zone A, a game between the defending plate champions Ipswich and the Conwood Hunt Sports Club, featuring none other than Dale Richards. I think that is going to carry a lot of interest. These two teams have also been dominating that zone. They've been beating teams badly, and one and and what makes it even more interesting is that in the plate competition, only the zone winners will go through to the playoffs. So it is a matter of not losing uh, at, at this particular point. I don't think teams can afford to lose uh, going into the competition. So we've got the Ipswich team. I can tell you, Ipswich have played three matches, Philip. They have batted second in all three matches. They are striking at a, a rate of over 10 runs per over. And in the three matches they have played, they've lost one wicket. So, I mean, they, they have... Also, really that, been T that T10 tournament you guys hosted a year or so ago seems to be working. Well, I don't know if it is that or the team has been strengthened. <laughs> I can't tell you that the team has definitely uh, been strengthened. A, a rate of 10 week. runs, so 10 runs for over. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Well, like I said, I lost one wicket in three innings. So mm -hmm. the opening pair have been knocking, uh, have been batting to victory in, in, in each in each. Well, the downside of that is that you you don't know what's what's going to happen when the middle order is tested. So that would be of some. Well, that is also true when the middle order is exposed, and that is one. But and I also mentioned that Dale Richards has been at the forefront of the Conwood Hunt Club. I mean, I I believe that he will be a key factor as far as Conwood Hunt uh, uh, is concerned through, throughout. Not only for this match um, on Sunday. Remember, this game is being played on Sunday at the Eden Lodge Ground. We call it the ELG. Mm -hmm. And the ELG all the way. Well, just the ELG. We don't. We don't. Use the word My anymore. mistake. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, so you know. <laughs> if you get back now to the cup, uh, we talk about winning and losing. Uh, by the way, um, you remember that that fence that you um, like to sit on? Well, we, we talked pulled about it, we, we pulled it down, Wayne. The, the fence is fences, down. Though. But well, there's the fence, there's the fence, the fence, uh -huh. and then there's defense. <laughs> well, both are gone. So, isolation Cavaliers versus Wildy at isolation. Call it, man. Wildy. 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 I go with Wildy as well. And this is on Saturday. Pickwick versus UFA that's being played at Foursquare. Wait, wait. I'm with you there. Um, Common Mayor versus UWIA at Common Mayor. UWIA. I wouldn't argue with you. Police versus Empire. A At tricky Vimov. one. A tricky one. Um, police been playing some good cricket in, in, in sports. Empire will be weakened. But mm -hmm. I will still go over the Blues. Empire. Gladiola versus uh, St. Catherine at uh, races. Gladiola. The form book says St. Catherine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Gladiola in this. I'm, going with, I'm giving Gladiola that home advantage, and uh, I'm giving them that because if they played the potential, I think they'd be a better side than St. Catherine. But yeah, maybe on form, St. Catherine would have done a bit better. UWI um, versus YMPC. UWIB versus YMPC. 
Well, MPC, very much dependent on a Dwayne Smith's performance, but on form, UWAB. Well, I was just going to say, um, I, I, I'm not going to be with you there because I thought you were going to MPC route. But uh, yes, I, I would think UWAB um, would be the favorites there for me. Um, Lords versus Wonders. I, I'm going with Wonders. In fact, Wonders looks to me to be certainly one of the most, uh, one of the best organized teams in the competition. So yeah, uh, I'll be backing them. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, Wonders look very, very prepared. And Lords, uh, a good start, but against lesser opposition. Mm -hmm. um, but against a side like Wonders, I, I wouldn't give them much of a chance. Maple versus Spartan at Trent. I'm going to go with Spartan for experience. Mm -hmm. Even without Brooks. Even without Brooks. Foundation versus Yorkshire at Churchill. Yorkshire should have been this one. I would think so. Carlton versus a youth B. Well, a show in Carlton. Yeah, and again, like Wonders, a very impressed with what I've seen from Carlton so far. Uh, mm -hmm. On Sunday, Commonwear versus Wildey at uh, Waterford. Not Waterford. Um, at, uh, yeah, at Waterford. At Waterford, yeah. yes. Waterford, yes. Um, you're going to yeah. Wildey, so like. Isolation mm -hmm. versus Pickwick uh, at Isolation. Uh, take Pickwick. Take Pickwick as well. Police versus Youth A at Wemo. Police. Uh -huh. Likewise. St. Catherine versus UWIA at St. Catherine. UWIA. Uh -huh. Likewise. Empire versus Gladiola at Bank Hall. Empire. Very much so. And uh, in the other zone, UWIB versus Wonders at UWA. I'm still going to go with Wonders. We're both going with Wonders. YMPC versus they, Maple at um, YMPC versus Maple at Beckles Road. YMPC should get the better of I them. would think so. I give them home advantage and they doing Smith advantage. Um, Foundation versus Lords. It's the hardest one of all to call, I, I must say. But Lords, um, the strength has been in their bowling. And I, mm -hmm. I think that they, their bowling might be a bit too strong for, for Foundation. So I'll go with Lords. Well, I will differ on this one. I think that uh, I like what I saw from Foundation, even against Carlton, although they were comfortably beaten. But um, they've got to work on their fielding. But I like the uh, intent in terms of the batting. And I think they've got some pretty good bowlers. And the guy, Doughty, that you had talked about on the previous yes, show, the um, he was equally yeah. impressive um, in that game as well. And if Davis gets going, he could cause some problems. Well, so I'm going, to go, they, yeah, they, yeah. I'm going to go with Foundation there. So we, we have a point of difference. Spartan versus yeah, yes. Carlton at um, Queen's Park. Carlton on form, yep. definitely. I would Beacon Spartan team. And youth B versus Yorkshire. Um, youth the youth B in the home the home side. I, I'm gonna go with Yorkshire there. But yeah, Yorkshire should go get home there. Mm -hmm. So an interesting uh series of matches or two sets of matches on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, as you said. The one that's probably the trickiest of all would be that foundation lords. Contest, that foundation lords the game. teams that are doing well, let's say, uh, for the most part, are up against teams that have not been doing so well. So, unless so we get some major upsets, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Cricket, the game of glorious uh, uncertainty. Well, I just played. was going to mention that it's still cricket, it's still it's played on the day. Played. And um, as I like to mention, it has thrown so much egg in my face now that I am immune to egg. <laughs> Okay, well, well it, it was good chatting with you um, regarding the T20. So we're going to invite our viewers to join us again next week when we talk T20.